Holy Spirit, help me. Help me to speak today. Help me, Holy Spirit, to speak. <laughs> if God will not help us, no matter the help that we get from man or from ourselves, it will not be counted in eternity. We must make up our mind now or never that either God helps us to the uttermost or we do not want any help from anywhere. The helper will be available and able to help us when we've shown to him that we are indeed helpless. The reason God is not coming to the aid of some of us like he would really want is because we still have energy to help us. We still have contacts that we depend on. We still have lies that we believe in. One of the very, very first expression of slavery is to believe a lie. Truth sets free lies and slaves. This morning, I want to be helped of the Lord. And I want to get to the place where I will stand before the Lord and say, in truth, I am now helpless. Do not want any help that is not from you. In Genesis chapter 3, when man fell, something profound happened right there. When he fell, and is knew that he was naked and ashamed. He quickly fixed himself up. He helped himself to cover his nakedness. There are places in our life that we need to lose our strength to the Lord so that he can help us. There are places in our life that the reason the Lord will not come to our help is because we still have strength that we should have relinquished to him, that we should have given over to him. He covered himself with a fig tree. Anything that helps you to cover your flesh, to cover your weakness, to cover your nakedness, to cover your shame, apart from God, is a fig tree in your life. And this morning, God must curse it. God must curse it. It must dry up. This was why Jesus had to come to curse the fig tree. Why? Because it was the fig tree in the beginning that was the helping part of man when God should actually be his help. What made God in heaven to know that Adam had done something sacrilegious? God expected Adam to run to him. Adam didn't run because he had something else that was helping. This is the first place that we are going to start this morning. What exactly is that thing that is helping me 
that I cannot find help in God. I cannot go to God anytime I do anything. I run to those things. I run and I cover, I perch. I cover myself there. I run away from them and I cover myself. I cover my nakedness. I will not find help from God if I keep running to those things. Those places that I should have lost my strength for his own strength. God was going there and do a very deep work of cursing them. After man covered himself successfully, then God came down to look at what is giving man help apart from himself. Are you following me? What is giving him help apart from himself? God had to come down to see, let me look down and see why he's not running to me. <laughs> oh my goodness. Let me see why he's running away from me. Every other time that God will come down in the cool of the day before now, man would run to him. They will fellowship. He would, man would take him through what he has been doing. That dimension was fellowship. It was, a, it was a gathering of the one that God loves. And this was the first time, this was the very first time that God will come down in the cool of the day and man will be hiding. Hiding because he has been helped by the fig tree to manage himself, to manage his weaknesses, to cover his shame, to cover his, his nakedness. When in fact, God expects him to run to him and say, well, God, I am naked. I need you to clothe me. I've done something that is wrong. I've done this. I've done that. The reason we find it very difficult to see God as the, as the first person we run to when we sin is because we still have some things that, is, that are helping us. We still have some things that are keeping us. We still have some things that are, that are, that are packaging our, our selfish, our flesh, our sinful motive. We still have some things that are giving us strength, some things that we know that when we run to, when we hide there, when we hide our flesh, there nobody will know it may be anointing it may be anointing it may be anointing that we believe that well when we do some things and we you know uh, we fast we pray we speak in tongues uh, it is gone when we do some activities and we pour some libation or we, we do some sacrifice, whatever it is that we depend upon. When that thing happens to me, once I call my pastor, once I call upon this one, once I call upon my contacts, once I look at my network, what are those things that are helping us to cover our flesh, our frailty, our proclivities, instead of us running to him to show to him how helpless we are. Some of us, the state of our strength, the show of our strength to God is the reason God will not help us. When you, when you need somebody to really, really help you, you will show to the person the state of your helplessness. Isn't that the cardinal of, of seeking for assistance that you are humble enough to admit that you do not have anything else? It will be a dangerous thing for a man to have something that is helping him and to go out and say he does not have anything. It, 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 this is where God meets us at every point in time. We shouldn't still be macho when he expects us to be weak to him, when he expects us to be vulnerable to him, when he expects us to say, if you will not help me, I am doomed. Why? Because nobody, I have borne all the bridges behind me. I have borne everything. I have nothing to run to except you. I hope you're following me, please. And when he, he, he hid himself, after covering himself with that fig tree, when he hid himself, then God came down. 
God asks a very critical question. Where are you? The truth is, at every point in time, you do not come to God. He knows where you are, but he needs to confirm very well. So he will ask you, where exactly are you hiding? What exactly is giving you succor? What is exactly is giving you rest wherever you are? And Adam responded, that this is why I'm, I've done this. And you saw the next thing God did. He brought out the real help and he removed the one that he has, as he has done. He removed it. He cursed it. From that time on, the fig tree became a target in heaven that when Jesus will come down to the earth, first he would locate Nathaniel under the fig tree and he would tell Nathaniel, uh, blessed are you, uh, uh, a true Israelite in whom there is no guile. And Nathaniel will ask, when did you see me? He said, from when you were under the fig tree, that is when you had things that helped you, when you, when you, when you, when you thought you didn't need me, okay? When you went to uh, a fig tree, like your forefathers went in the garden. And now I've come to declare judgment upon the fig trees. And then Jesus would later demonstrate each day when he was hungry, the same way he was hungry in the wilderness, he was hungry again, he was hungry again, and he looked everywhere and he saw this fig tree. And he was looking to find a fruit on the fig tree. The reason he cursed the fig tree was not because there was no fruit upon it. As a matter of fact, I used to believe that the reason he cursed the fig tree was because there was no fruit uh, on it. Normally, fig trees should also bear fruit. But the major reason that this particular operation would take place was so that God can find occasion to lay to rest everything that will help man to run away from him. He looked at that tree and he cursed it. He cursed it and the disciples had to ask God, oh Jesus, what is happening? Was it, I mean, why there was no fruit on it? Why did you curse it? Oh no, he cursed it so that there wouldn't be anything that man will run up to. He cursed it so that when man is hungry, man will come to him. He cursed it because when man needs help, man will come to him. That is our contemplation this morning, that anything that I am leaning on, anything that I am leaning on, anything that I am leaning on, that I cannot do without, anything that is of utmost strength to me, that is helping me to substitute God's help for man's help. Anything that when the devil touches in my life, I can deny Christ, I can turn back, I can, I can leave the faith, I can depart, I can go away, I can say this God, I don't even understand him anymore. Lord God Almighty, what is that thing today? That when the devil touches, it will get to me. Jesus loved his father and he gave himself to his father. He loved man. He never gave himself to man at all. He never committed himself to man. Why? Because he knew that man cannot help him. Any help that will not come from eternity is worthless. Any help that is all, that is of the earth, any help that is timely, any help that is that is of this earth is not anything to lean on. Before we go into today's contemplation, I will want us to pray to God wherever we are. Whatever that strength is, that is making me to deny the strength that God has for me, the provision that God has to me, or for me, the help where, where I've, been, I've been showing uh, uh, macho, where I've been showing that I can handle myself, where I've been showing strong man. We have been showing that I, I have it all uh, packed together. I have it all put together. 
where I've been showing that I can take care of myself when God needs me to come to him and show to him how helpless I am so that he can help me. Lord, have mercy upon me today. Have mercy upon me today. Help me to be helpless. Oh God, help me not to depend on anything or anyone. Help me, oh God, to show that you are my only help. Help me, almighty God, not to start a jealousy that my hand cannot, 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 cannot handle. Help me, oh God, to have nothing to, 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 to compare to you. Help me, oh God, to have nothing to, 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 to compare with you in my life. Help me in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Help me, almighty God. Help me in the name of Jesus. Help me. I do not want to lean on that bulletproof car for my, for my, for my support. I do not want to lean on tithe and offering for my, for my, for my, for my support. I do not want to lean on, on relationship for my support. I do not want to lean on anointing for my support. I want to be vulnerable to you. I want to be vulnerable to you. I want you to be my only help and my holy hope. If I build any help on the face of the earth, it would take me away from you. It would take me farther away from you. I need to be vulnerable, to be clingy to you, to show that I have no life, I have no one, I have nothing. This will make me depend on you every day of my life. Help me in the name of Jesus. Help me to cultivate that habit in the spirit that my physical dimension will embrace, which is at every point in time when I sin or when anything happens to me, I will run to you instead of running away from you. In the name of Jesus, help me, oh God, to believe in spirit and in deed and in truth that without you, I can do nothing. Because when we read that portion, we read it with lies inside of us. Some of us, we know that there are things we depend on. There are people we depend on. There are things we depend on. There are things we rely on. That is why somebody would say that without him, we can't do anything. That's why somebody will dangle carrot before us. That's why whatever we think is given to us when it's taken from us, we start crawling on the ground. When are we going to say goodbye indeed? When are we going to say to hell with anyone that thinks he wants to take the place of God in me? Anything that has shown, that anything that we have put our help in has taken the place of God in us. And God will curse our things. God does not condone anything uh, taking his place. God does not condone it at all. He is a jealous God. There is a dimension of him that is jealous. And Lord God Almighty, look into my castle, look into my life, look into my heart, whatever it is today. Whatever it is today. But I'm leaning on. Remove them. Far away from me. Remove them. Let that passage, let it come alive in me. In the name of Jesus. That truly, you are my help. You are the one I lean on. If you will not help me, nobody will. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Let me be completely, oh God, open to you. At all times in my life. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. At the stage you are in your life, can you truly say God is the only help you have? Can you truly, truly say God is the only help I have? Can you look at your logbook? Can you look at your contacts? When anything happens to you today, who do you call first? That will show to me where your help is. When anything happens to some of us today, our phone is by our side. In fact, we, we, we show it in the affinity for our phone. We put it next to us. 
in those days, the closest to a man's head, apart from the pillow, is Bible. It used to be Bible in those days. But right now, I check my Christian folk. The closest thing to them, apart from their pillow, is their phone. Because they are ready to dial that number. They are ready to look it up on Google. They are ready to call Siri. They are ready to call every other thing. God then becomes the second or the last thing to do or to call. Second or the last being to call. They would have done everything to show where our help lies. And you say that your help is in the name of the Lord. Do you really mean it? Do you really, really mean it? That your help is in the name of the Lord. So that when you call him and he doesn't come, can you truly say you are helpless? Can you truly say you are helpless when he doesn't come for you? Or when, he's, when you see that he doesn't come for you, you can turn to sorcery like Balaam. It was written, if anybody can look for that part uh, of, of, of Balaam in the Bible, that when he notices, when he senses that God is not coming his way, he will turn into sorcery. It was very easy. How, do, how does a man spectacularly switch from God to the devil? Can you truly say God is your help? Can you truly say God is your help? In this season, lies will not take us anywhere. When we read the scriptures, we need to ask ourselves, do I really believe in the scripture? Or I just say it like every other person. Do I really believe in the scripture? Is this scripture relatable to my life? Can I relate to it? Every point in time, at every point in time, we see over and again the allegiance of man is known in his deepest hour of need. Who he turns to, what he says, what he calls upon, who he calls upon, determines where he is, shows us where his strength is. What is the source of your strength? What is the only strength you have or do you have all the help that strengthens you and I say help me Lord and he says I want to help you but something else is helping you how do we fix that how do we fix that don't want this vision where when I help you, you will, you will attribute that help to the other thing that you leaned on. Human even are the same. They say heaven helps those who help themselves. And each time people say that to me, I ask them, where is it in your Bible? Heaven can never help those who help themselves. Heaven instead helps those who show to heaven that they are helpless and cry for help. God cannot, cannot continue to become second fiddle to us. We go try every other thing and when they fail, we find our way to God. Sometimes he just deliberately chooses to ignore us, ignore us completely. Because we do it time and again. We do it time and again. We do it time and again. When he expects us to run to him first, we run to other things and it breaks his heart. Where does your help truly come from? Some of us, our prayer is to always pray for what helps us not to break down. 
Do you understand what I'm saying? Uh, so, my God, because someone is available for us, helping us financially, then our prayer becomes, Lord, help him so that he won't die. Do you understand that, that what I'm saying? Help him, keep him. Uh, you, you know, you might not be that kind of person, okay? Uh, but I know, I know what God is showing to me. I know what God is saying to me. So keep him safe. Keep that brother safe. Keep that sister safe. He has been helpful to me. He's okay. He's helping you, but you don't submit your entire life to him above God. You don't make him primary and God secondary. When man helps you, you give glory to God. God must be the primary source because one day he will test you and he will remove those men. He will remove those contacts. He will remove everything. Then what happens to you? Some of us taunts and fight God because the things that we, we go, we run to for help, they are no more responding to us than we fight God because God has stopped helping those things that help us. Everything that is helping me all along that I've even called God to help those things so that they will continue be, to be there for me. <laughs> and these things are really taking the place of God in my life and crept in to take the place of God in my life, remove them one after the other in my life. I can't speak for you. I'm the only one that can speak for myself. I can't speak for you. You have to speak for yourself. Lord God Almighty, do these things, oh God and take the full glory of my life so that the glory that you have given to your son and that he has given to me that I want to share, I will share it without giving it over to any graven image. That is what he meant when he says, my glory will I not share. He didn't say he will not share it with me. He's saying that you cannot share it with any grieving image. Anything that is helping me, aside from God, that I've put my help in, is an idol, is a grieving image, and God will not share that his glory with that thing. But he has shared, he has, he has given his glory to his son, Jesus, so that he can share it with us. Jesus said, the glory with which you have given to me before the beginning of the earth, have given to them. My my, when I was much younger, in my in my mother church, there is a prayer they always lead us to pray in Yoruba. Ki kuma pala no me, ti kuba pango, kilevaje. Say God, do not let my benefactor die. What if he dies? How do I get to the place where I've raised the bar? for a benefactor above that of God. And I'm now telling God to help me to hold that benefactor so that he won't die. When in fact, I should be running to God all the time to thank God for, for the benefactor he has given to me and, and, and to show to him that my heart is with him, not with the benefactor. Most of us, the people that help us and the thing that help us, if they call for us to give us something, that will affect our faith. Something that will sh that will that will make us deny our faith. We will give those things blood. We will give it. Thank you, Lord. I wish we can labor more on this prayer. When we get to the middle of what we have come to do today, you will understand why God is querying and pushing this aspect, pushing this aspect very well. Because a time will come, every wedge that we are resting on, 
everything that is our comfort and our support upon the face of the earth, they will be questioned. They will be questioned. They will be questioned. It will be shaken so that God can find us faithful or faithless. That's why Jesus said, when I come to the earth, will I find faith? Will I find that substance in a man that he hopes for? <laughs> can, I, can I find inside of him that evidence of things not seen? Uh, or I will find him in another place helping himself. Will he find faith? Will he find faith? Or he will, he will find, or he will find men that have put their faith in something else. Will he find faith in men? Or will he find men putting their faith in something or someone else apart from him? And then we'll come to him and say, God, this is where my help is. This is where my help is coming. Some of us are even so bold to tell him, watch over those things so that they won't die. When those things are the major contention that is making us not to come to him. If we are such, such, such a people, we are living a lie. We are living a lie. First, the fig tree can never cover man's sin. Nothing in this world can cover man's sin. Nothing in this world can give man a divine nature. God had to come to deal with that by bringing the blood, by bringing his son before the foundation of the, of the world, the land that had been slain. God had to bring the tonic and use it to cover it. And because that's the only thing that is prescribed in heaven that is recommended in heaven to cover man from his nakedness and shame. Every other thing that you put your hand Cut in, you put your hand in, you put your mind onto for help can never 100% guarantee you they will fail. Thank you, Almighty God. In Jesus' name we pray. Matthew chapter 4. I'm praying for God. Help me today to be able to find grace for utterance. My spirit is so heavy beyond what I can carry. Matthew chapter 4, where we touched uh, some places yesterday, and God is taking us uh, deeper today. Matthew chapter 4. I would read in various, various um, versions today. And permit me, I will leave English version and read the Yoruba version as well. And would we'll trust him to take us through Matthew chapter 4. I'm particularly interested in verse 5. Let me first read in NKJV. Let me start from there. Then the devil took him up into the holy city. Set him on the pinnacle of the temple. NIV. Then the devil took him to the holy city and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. Easy, easy Bible. Then the devil led Jesus to Jerusalem. If you remember verse one of chapter four, 
Matthew. The, and Jesus was led up by the Holy Spirit, or the Holy Spirit led Jesus up. So now the devil was the one leading Jesus to Jerusalem. He then made him stand on the highest part of the temple. Amplified, concise, verse 5. Then the devil took him into the holy city and placed him on a turret, the pinnacle gable of the temple sanctuary. Let me cross over to, let me go to contemporaries. Next, the devil took Jesus into the holy city to the highest part of the temple. Let me cross to the Yoruba and read, and read for, uh, read from verse five. Nigga <laughs> no Obey the so so temple. What is very clear from all the versions that we've read was that the devil initiated the move. And Jesus was very aware of what the devil initiated. First, the devil took Jesus into the holy city. Many, many, many years ago, a friend of mine had a burden to pray for power to heal the sick and raise the dead. He prayed so much and labored so much because he had burden to go to the nations of the earth for Jesus. And I would like to think that, well, they were they were in order, okay? They were, they were not, well, they were not out of place. I would like to think. <laughs> and so he was praying, doing everything uh, humanly possible to acquire this power, to be able to pray for the sick, raise the dead. And one day he went for a ministration. And in the middle of the ministration, someone died. I think the person died on the spot or the person was rushed in. It was a mighty crusade. And he stood up, according to him, not even uh, turning to God to say, well, God, what am I to do in this, in this, in this particular situation? He just stood up believing that the reason for uh, the, the crusade or the reason for the power that God has given to him is to heal the sick, regardless. And he stood up and he went to the dead, prayed and prayed and prayed, nothing happened. He felt so dejected, he felt so pained, he felt so frustrated, before the crowd and everything, and he went home. When he went to the uh, uh, accommodation that was provided for him by the man of God that invited him to town, 
it so happened that in the night, midnight, the wife of the man of God died. And so he said he was in his room still feeling very rejected, dejected, frustrated, disappointed when he heard the sound. And he had sound and he was like, what is happening here? What is happening here? And the Lord said, the power that I have given to you, this is now the time for you to go and use it. Go in there and go and wake, raise that woman up. And he went there and he raised her up. And everywhere was, everybody was jubilating and everywhere was full of, uh, you know, excitement. And he went to his room and the Lord said, the first time you started praying for the power to raise the sick and to, and to, to heal the sick and to raise the dead, I need to let you know that I wasn't the one that inspired that prayer. It was your ego. It was your ambition. It was everything noble and good and uh, everything that we call you know, destiny, everything that, you know, that cries for success led you to it, not me. If the devil could take Jesus to the holy city and, he, and, and set him up, it means there are some expression of spiritual gifts. There are some craving of spiritual gifts. <laughs> there are some things that we have done, thinking that the opened door was of God, but it was a setup from the devil. Ah, can you stomach what is coming out today? The devil can give up money to have you. The devil can set you up with the cares of this world and riches to have you. The devil can set you up. He can set you up and bring you to a point that with your pious mind, you are digging, digging into the treasures of anointing and power as a child of God uh, uh, so that your, your self your self-aggrandizement will be enthroned in your life instead of Christ. And that will bring your downfall. You can call this the setup. I want you to understand. I want I want you to understand what God is saying today. The prayers that we pray, the demand that we lay on God, who inspired us to lay those demands? Ego. Ambition can lead a man to ask for anointing that Benny in us. A quest for popularity and fame can drive a man to ask for the kind of fame that Billy Graham has. Meanwhile, it's a setup. It's a trap. The same fame that a righteous man will have is the same fame that 
uh, an unrighteous man will have. The same currency, Naira, that a born again Christian will spend is the same currency that a non believer will spend. The difference between these two people is how they give themselves to these things. Because fame to the wealthy, to the Christian, is fame to the non Christian. The same way. That is, it is the same platform, is the same medium. The, the, the wealth of a, a born again will not have a different, a different coloration from the wealth of a non-born again. The popularity, when we say is popular, this is just the same way. The way people know him, the way people know her is the same way. What then sets the difference? What makes the difference between the two of them is one cannot do without those popularity. One cannot do without the wealth. One cannot do without the fame. It's like steroid. It's like cocaine. He needs it. He wants it by all means. He craves for it. He shows that it's for sale. The other one can do without them. That was what this particular test or temptation was about that the devil would be ready to set Jesus up with all the things that the first Adam has leased over to him, the devil. Because this power that is showing to Jesus here didn't belong to him. The first Adam leased his ground to the devil. And from then, the devil took charge of these things. But I can tell you that the devil can do without all these things. The reason the devil is having a a hold on wealth, having a hold of riches, having a hold of all those things, is that he's looking for a born again. He's looking for a child of God that he can set up with those things because he knows that flesh is undone in them. So he will set them up and the cravings of their fleshly desires will show, will show in these things. These things will show what has been inside. Wealth, fame, popularity, all these things will only show what is in man, what is underlying the work that has not been done. And this is what the devil is looking for. So he acquires all these riches, he acquires all this deception, he acquires all this fame, he acquires all this popularity, and then he's looking for a born again child of God to set him up, to take him to the holy city, to set him up and to put him on the highest point. Do you know what that means? To put him on the highest visibility, highest platform of visibility that will make everyone to take note of him and to see him at the pinnacle. Some of us won't fail so badly. And oftentimes we are, we are, we are covered with the veil of religion. And the devil knows what those things are in us that are undone. Isaiah said, who is me? For I am undone. <laughs> the devil knows those things that are undone in the natural man. So all the devil thought here was that, the de the, the, was that Jesus was still in his natural state. He didn't know that it was the Holy Spirit that led him to this place. So when the Holy Spirit was leading him to this place, 
having been conceived of the Holy Spirit, having been delivered of the Holy Spirit, having been, having been, you know, groomed in the Holy Spirit, having been filled with the Holy Spirit, having been led up by the Holy Spirit. The devil didn't know that Jesus had given up his flesh, his fleshly desires, the egos, the ambition, everything. Therefore, when he, when the, when Jesus got to the place where the devil would now set him up, nothing was in him that would hold him. Nothing, no greed was in him. No proclivity of human desire was in him that would hook him up on the fame, on the popularity, on the ego, on the, on the wealth, on the riches, on all those things, those human tendencies were not there anymore. When the devil sets you and I up, will we discern and recognize that it is the devil? Or we will just say, well, God has provided it, hallelujah. The major reason the devil has all those tools that he uses to set men up is because he's looking for those that he will set up and bring down. Did you see what he said when he said, if you are the son of God, jump down. <laughs> I have set you up. Every human that I set up like this, they want to jump. Oh God, Hi, they want to jump. If only you know that that prayer that you prayed for that person to be healed, you were not expected to pray until God has led you. If only you know that that big door that was open to you, that you call evangelism to the nations, if only you know that you are not expected to latch on those doors until the Father has told you whether he is the one or not. If only you know that that sick that was brought to you, you are not meant to even lay hands on him at all. You are not meant to even say anything at all. If only you know that these things were set up. They were set up. They were set up to show whether you will jump down. To show, Kai, the devil knows how to bring cases in front of children of God, such that they will be under pressure to prove to the world that they belong to Jesus. I've had some, so many preachers say, well, if this does not happen, then the Lord has not sent me. I will show, I will show you people that God has sent me. By the time I pray and God will answer so that you can know that God has sent me. God didn't put a burden upon us to show the world that he has sent us. Preacher, preacher, they will tell you that, oh, we have taken this case to everywhere. But somebody said that we should go and look for you, DB. Somebody said that when we get to you, this matter will be solved. And without DB discerning to ask God, God, is this your door? Is this your door? DB's head just swells up. DB's head swells up. Why? Because DB is still undone. 
<laughs> there is a human nature inside of BB that craves for flattery, for adulation, for adoration, for praise of men. And he will, his head will swell up. He, what is unknown to DB was that at that point he has been set up. 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 Up, up, up on the holy city. He has been set up. He has been made to stand in the highest place. At that point, all DB needs to do is to say, let me check with the Father. Holy Spirit, what are you saying? Is this where I'm supposed to be? Is this what I'm supposed to do? Should I even be part of this at all? But what does DB do? DB goes on with every anointing that is given to him and he begins to speak. Oh Lord, oh Babalola, the God that has called me to this ministry. You are the one that called me. You are the one that called me. You are now under pressure to show yourself. And the devil is saying, aha, that's it. That's it, that's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. Because he has heard that we have taken the case to everywhere. Hey, we have taken the case to everywhere. Meaning, I, I, I should now be showing to the world that DB was born uh, uh, on the on the persona or on the altar that was dedicated by Babalola. I should now be showing people that DB was named by Pastor Kumoyi. I should now be showing people that DB started preaching at the age of nine. I should now be showing people all these people that are running up and down that are pre preaching now. Uh, I should be showing them that are not their mates. All these people that are coming out now having church. I started preaching at the age of nine. I should be showing them by now. I should be showing them, uh, at least by now, people shouldn't be saying, ah, ah, DB, where have you been all along? If truly this power is in you, if there are people that are not up to you that are everywhere, then I begin to have that pressure to prove myself. I begin to have that pressure to show myself so that I can also be at the top tier of men that are very strong upon the face of the earth. Once I stand up and I start reasoning all these things in my heart, even without reaching out to pray for that sake, I've been set up. I've been set up. A lot of great men that God has great, great future for. The devil has set them up and they're falling before the revival starts. All these things that were happening, they were speaking to the future of the ministry of Jesus. That if Jesus could be delivered from this, if Jesus couldn't fall for the temptation, it was clear that the next three years, nothing would fall him down. Watch when the devil sets you up. That's the title of this, this, this message. Watch it. Watch it. How can I know that the devil is setting me on the holy city? How can I know that the devil has made me to stand in the highest place, pinnacle of the temple? Is through the Holy Spirit. There is no other way I will know. Once I start responding to all this flattery, I start feeling the pressure of ministry, the need to prove myself, the need to speak, the need to prophesy, the need to say this, the need to say that. Oh, DB, what do you think about election? What is the Lord saying about election? Has the Lord told me to speak? But because they come to interview me and I will say, ah, if I don't talk now, it will look like a, a DB. Are you not praying? Uh, people are praying now. Ministers are talking. You are not talking. People are praying. I remember there was a particular year. Um, I don't know what happened. I think the Lord had told me in 19, 20, 2019 to speak on what will happen running up to 2030. You know, some, 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 you know. So I had, I had spoken the mind of God and I left it there. By 2021, things that I said now started coming to pass. But of course, uh, not too many people heard uh, me when I said it then. Okay, not too many people because I mean I've I, I don't I'm not on any platform. I can tell you that for free. 
is only when God helps me. <laughs> I don't, I don't. So, so people now started coming to me to say, ah, Didi, what are you? I mean, all these things that are that are happening. Do you not have anything to say? And I kept quiet. I didn't say anything. So one lady was very frustrated. I said, DB, is it that you cannot hear God or you, you just don't want to? People are talking, men of God, I said, what are you saying? I said, well, God has opened my mouth in 2019. And when he opened my mouth, then he didn't tell me to open my mouth now. He said, so those of us that were not there in 2019, what happened? I said, go and meet God. Go and meet God. This is how we find ourselves in a dangerous spot where we begin to now prove ourselves. We begin to prove ourselves. We begin to prove ourselves. I must show that I am prayerful. I must show that I am prayerful. Then I begin to fast 21 days. Has God called you to do the fasting? I begin to pray. Oh God, I begin to form prayer. Does God, has God called you to do all those things? Or is the burden that is inside of you that is ignited by ego, ignited by ambition, ignited by the pressure to do something so that it will look like you are not doing anything. There are different work at play that we have put in our hand that they are just set up. This is why a small breeze like this, you know when you put some, something at the, at the highest point, at the cliff, you know you don't need so much energy to push that thing down. You just need a a, in some cases, all you need is to blow, is to blow hair in the direction of that thing. Once you blow hair in the direction of that thing, the thing just goes down immediately. This is what the devil does. He just sets up the believer with the anointing that he's looking for. He sets him up with the fame. He sets him up and the believer is at the highest height, the highest height, and unfortunately is not holding on to anything. The energy that the devil will exert to push him down will be very, very small. The higher they go, the harder they fall. I want to be sure that everyone here today in different magnitude and different dimension, you understand what I have explained. Is it clear to a little extent to you what I have, what we are contemplating on today? Because I do not want to speak over anybody's head. That there are things you are praying for right now that God has not sent you to pray for them. They are merely set up. It's a set up. If a dead man is brought before you today, what moves you? Is it your, the pressure to prove yourself or the Holy Spirit? You know, if it was not the Holy Spirit, Elisha would have blown himself out of proportion when Naaman came to him. You, you only need to read the letter that the king of Assyria sent to uh, the king of Israel. In fact, the king of Israel felt that he's calling for a war. How can you say that I should heal him? My God, that's what the king was saying already. He was somebody that now said, King, don't worry, don't worry. Elisha is in town. Elisha will help you. And they must have sent the memo to Elisha. Oh, because Elisha was living in Dothan. Elisha had relocated from the flesh to the spirit. Elisha was not in this flesh at all. So that flat tree couldn't meet him at home. That flat tree couldn't see him anywhere. Immediately, Naaman got there. He said, go and tell that guy to go and take his back in the dirtiest of the river. He didn't even come out. That was what annoyed Naaman. That a man as, as well put together as me. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. If Pastor Deboye sent comes to your house and knock, and the Holy Spirit says, Don't show up to him, I need you in your room to start praying. Don't go down, don't go and visit him. Huh. Will you take it? Will you take it? Will you, will you, will you cope with that? Will, it's a practical question I'm asking. Will you cope with that?
if the almighty Benihim comes to town and he comes the way God Lindsay left US according to what was documented to say the Lord said if you come to Nigeria and look for somebody by the name Idahosa imagine you are that Idahosa that they have come to look for and they trace and trace and trace you to your house and the Lord said don't go don't go to receive them tell them that you are not available will you do that who holds you this is the reason why a lot of casualties will still be seen in future this is why a lot of fall big fall big big fall will happen because men at the moment the display of anointing is not the one that god has put inside of them are we saying they are working with false anointing no they have not been delivered from their proclivities so the part of them that is that is that is ex exhibiting all these things is not the conquered part it's not the divine nature it's not the, the part that god has removed every greed every self inside of self is still motivating them to do most of these things greed is still motivating them competition is still motivating them to do these things god will have to deliver me i would have to cry to him what part of me is undone that has the tendency of responding to this trap when the devil sets me up will i know it will i know it will i even come consult you holy spirit will i come back to you holy spirit and say God, holy spirit should i take this when they set you up will i come back to you You say you are an intercessor. Who called you? Have you sat down to dissect who called you or what led you? If you are led by what, then you are undone. <laughs> you are undone, no. You are undone. You are undone. This quest for Jesus, this looking for Jesus, these uh, programs that you attend, who leads you to go for them? I hear people say, well, if I don't, if the, this program that they've invited me to, if I don't go, it, it, will, it, will, it will appear like uh, it will come across as, uh, let, it, let it come across. Let it come across because some of them are set up. Some of them are set up. Let him come across. If suddenly I knock on your door, like uh, Jeremiah, and I say to you, uh, come and have a, a drink, like the sons of Rechab were called. Will you respond because it is DB or you will respond because it is God that has released you? Are you a respecter of persons? It means you are undone. <laughs> One of my sages told me a story about that happened to him many, many years ago. The two people that were involved, if I mention their names, we all know them in this country, so I won't mention. One was a son to the other one. The other one was a father, okay? And the one that was a father came to the son and said, the Lord said that he should employ a young man to his establishment. So he took it instead of going to God, set up. <laughs> he took it and he employed the guy. And from the day the guy got to the company, everything that the guy touches fails. In fact, there are deals that they would have sealed the deal, they would have 
kill the deal already. Do you know what it means for a deal to have been concluded? And then die minute they call you that they've given it to someone else. I have experienced it, so I can tell you how painful that is. <laughs> and everything like that started happening. In fact, there were some deals that all they told the man was go and pick up the file docket, just the contract terms, the agreement of the deal. And immediately it gets in there and they see him like this. They will just call that they are not interested again and all that. And so things started failing. Businesses started closing down. And this man was, was very, very sad. And he said to his wife, I'm not having this. I want to go into the bush. He went with three ragulis bottles. And he said, I'm going to the bush. If, if the day I come back, if the day I come back, I will not return until I have heard from God. And when he got to that bush, the first day that he got there, the Lord told him, leave this bush now. Just leave. Leave. Because you are now doing what you should have done. He now turned to God and said, God, but it's your, it's your son. Your son, who is my father, came to me and said, you said. He said, when my son told me that I said, did you come back to me to confirm what my son said? Or you just believe him because he's your father in the Lord. So that was when the Lord said, remember, whoever is a father to you, just know that you have a father that is higher than your father. I made him as your father. You should have regard to me. You, I should be your primary recourse. Did you ask me? Did you ask me? What if I, what if, what if you, what if it was a setup? So he now turned to God, God, what should I do? He said, go and ask your so-called father. Ask him that I said, did I indeed say that to you, O oh, father? So angrily he went to the man of God and said, the Lord asked me to ask you now that that thing you said to me that I should employ this guy, did God really, really tell you? Oh. You know how our fathers do. You know how when you confront, how dare you confront, confront anointed. Mm -mm. God has sent me to come and tell you, I'm not a disrespectful son. On a very good day, I wouldn't have challenged you like this, but God has challenged me to come and meet you. Did he really told you this? Did he really tell you? And the man said, oh, hey, uh, my son, truth is God didn't tell me. If I mention the name of this man, he's, he's in this nation, he's a well-respected man, I won't say more than that. These two people, they are not fake men of God. He said, ah, that he just, uh, you know, he just, he just knew that if he says the Lord said, he will take it seriously. How many setups have we fallen for? How many setups have we fallen for? If God will not remove the root of human nature inside of us, the devil will set us up and we will fall for it. Elisha did it. So go and tell that mighty man of Velo or whatever he calls himself. If you go and wash in that dirtiest river, the guy was angry. He was so pissed. A popular man or a popular, popular person like me, Bill Gates. I came to see you. A popular person like me or uh, uh, Warren Buffett. I came to see you. a very popular person, me, like Elon Musk. I came to see you. You did not even appear to me at all. You sent someone to me that I should go and wash. Oga. Okay? Go and watch. It takes a man that is completely delivered from himself. It takes a man that is completely delivered from his proclivities. Ah, what exactly is holding you on? What exactly is, is trapping you? What exactly is having a, a hold on you today that will make you to respond to the setup and be taking by it and be snared by it. How many empty hands have you laid on empty hands and you call them anointed? How many words of knowledge have you given 
that are motivated by self. How many word from knowledge have you spoken as word of knowledge? What is actually leading you? What are you looking for? What are you, are you really looking for revival? You cry and cry and say, God, use me, use me. What exactly are you saying when you say, God, use me? Are you saying I need to be, I need to blow? Are you saying I need to be popular? Are you saying I need to be known? What exactly are you saying? If Jesus could be led up to the holy city, let it be known to you that you will also be led up. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> oh, you'll be led up. You will be set up so that we can know what you are made up of. So that we can know whether the Lord Almighty is your help indeed. Is your source is the one that you must receive or get your instruction from. Let us know that that is the only thing that will make us know. What motivates you? I cried and cried and cried and cried and I said, God, how? What will they take away from me today that will make that will just make me to crash land? They touch my wife today. Will I crash land or I will still save you? If they touch my children, will I crash land or I will still save you? If they touch my finances, what exactly? Am I delivered from everything, or are there are still some things that are holding that are giving, putting a strain on me, holding me to ransom? What what inspired you inspires you to rise up in in your readiness to handle any case that it brings to you? Is it God? Or is it the need for you to show yourself? I used to know of a man of God in those days. He does not handle any issue that any man of God can handle. No, he will tell you. First thing he will say is, uh, this case that you brought to me, have you been to any man of God at all? You say, yes, mention their names. If he doesn't think that they are in his league, he will say he's not interested. I'm not kidding. It's not like he will tell you, no, go, go and meet them. He wants you to go and try and then come to him and say, well, I've gone everywhere. There is no to say very good. Now you will know that God has called us. Ah, I watched some, some sages cry and I say, God, please, please. I don't, I don't, I want you. I don't want this thing. I don't want, I don't want this thing so bad like this. I want you. I want you so bad. I don't want these things. Whatever is undone in me, Lord, help me. If I on, don't in me, Lord help me. Lord help me. Whatever is competitive inside of me, Lord help me. In those days, I will hear men of God say, more often than not, 
that well, whether through strive or uh, out of strive, Christ is being preached. You remember that place that Paul talked about. <laughs> and, and so they will say, well, you know, whether, I mean, whatever happens, whether we are motivated by God or we are motivated by anointing, uh, the most important thing is that God is, God is being communicated to the world through us and all of that. We try to justify it. And sometimes you don't need to wait for God. Sometimes God does not, God will not say anything and the anointing will be upon you. Why, why, why is the anointing given to you? Is it not for service? Is it not for you to rise up and do something when you are moved? When, you, when, when, you are, when, when, when people come to you and they ask for help, why would you move? Is it all of the time that Jesus was motivated by God? Excuse me. It was all of the time. Jesus said, I can of my own do nothing. As I hear, I judge. And my judgment is just. Jesus said it there, black and white. All these things, anointing, power, uh, gifts, they respond to the greed that is inside of us. They respond to the part of us that is still human nature embedded, part of us that is not delivered from his cravings, they are the part of us that is not delivered from his proclivities, the burden that we carry, the things that we call vision, the things that we call things that God has told us to do and attend to. What is motivating them? If God, can, okay, let me put it this way. Can God send you to preach Christ in pretense? In responding to that thing that Paul said, what then? Only that in every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is preached. And in this I rejoice. Yes, I will rejoice. And I'm asking you, can God lead a man to preach Christ in uh, pretense? Yes or no? Can God raise a man to say, well, Brother, God can. God can. Jeremiah stood up and went to the sons of Rechabites and said to them, sit down. In fact, he called them into the temple. Anyone that has the Bible verse should bring it up. He called them into the temple. He called them into the temple and said, and brought a drink to them. I like to imagine that it was an alcoholic drink. And he said, come and drink. Excuse me, that was in pretense. God was the one that told him to go. Those guys, they stood on their ground that, no, our father taught us not to do this. They stood on the ancient landmark. They did not cancel the ancient landmark. They stood upon the word of God that the father has taught them. They held it and they did not, they did not deviate from it. And Jeremiah said, in that you have not deviated from this. And he started proclaiming, he started proclaiming blessing upon them.
that I took, Zazaniah, the son of Jeremiah, the son of Lalala, his brother, with all his sons, and the whole house of Rechabite. And I brought them into the house of the Lord in the chambers of the house of Anan, the son of Igladiah the man of God, which was by the chamber of the princes, above the chamber of Messiah, the son of Salom, the keeper of the door. Then I said before the sons of the house of Rechab, bowls full of wine and cups. And I said to them, drink wine. But they said, we will drink no wine. For Jonadab, the son of Rechab, our father, commanded us saying, you shall drink no wine, nor your sons. You shall not build a house, so is a seed. Plant a vineyard, nor have any of this, nor have any of this, but all your days you shall dwell in tents, you, that, that you may live many days in the land where you are sojourners. Those we have obeyed the voice of Jonadab, the son of Rechab, our father, in all that he charged us to drink no wine in our days, we, our wives, our sons, our daughters, nor to build ourselves houses to dwell in, nor do we, nor do we have vineyard field, but we have dwelled in tents and have obeyed and done according to what you know that. Then look at what the Bible what does says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel. Go and tell the men of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, we will not receive instructions to obey my words, says the Lord, the son of Jonadab, the son of Rahab, which he commanded his son not to drink wine and performed. For to this day, they drink none and obey their father's commandment. But although I have spoken to you rising early and speaking, you did not obey. I have also sent you to all, all my servant, the prophet, rising up early and sending them. Turn now everyone from your evil ways. Amend your ways and all of that. And he, and, he, and he started speaking, so surely the sons of Jonadab, the son of Rechab, have performed commandment of their fathers, which he commanded them. But these people have not obeyed me. And Jeremiah said to the house of Rechabite, thus saith the Lord of hosts, because you have obeyed the commandment of Jonadab, your father, kept all his precepts and done. Therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Jonadab, the son of Rechab, shall not lack a man to stand before me forever. Excuse me, sir. God can lead you to preach in pretense. However, you must not initiate pretense. Do you understand? You must not initiate preaching of pretense. And then said, well, uh, whether by, by, by preaching sincerely or by preaching in pretense, at least Christ is preached. No, God will not accept that. The, 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 motive, the, the distinguishing factor here is who is the source. It cannot be you. It must be God. God led Uzziah to go and marry a harlot. God. If you and I are in that generation, we will say Hosea is not a man of God. Won't we? We will. <laughs> However, was it God that told the old prophet to come out and deceive the young prophet? Was it God? Yes or no? Was it God? Someone help me. Yes or no? Was it God that brought out the... the... No, it wasn't God. It wasn't God. It was wickedness. It was wickedness. Why? Because the young prophet was undone. There was a dimension of him that relied so much on anointing, 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 anointing. And there was so much ego inside of the anointing. His flesh had not been dealt with. So when the devil came through the whole prophet to set him up, he hung him there and destroyed him. What did the man say? He said, God led him. Abi, what did he say? That God led him to come and meet with him. Was he God? No. Instead of the man to hold on to what God said, said to him at first, he didn't. Do you remember that prophet that stood and turned to somebody and said, strike me? And that one did not strike him because he was a, he was a man of God. And then he, he cursed him. And then he went to the next one. He said, strike me. That one had received memo that yesterday... This he, 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 he cursed the man because that one, that one did not strike him. He beat him blue black. 
Uh, that is a, 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 a type and shadow of a man that God has sent to preach in Britain. So we don't model things up. God can, can send anybody. Let me give, let me give the, a, a vulgar whatever. God can send a man to, oh God, to go and test the, oh God. Ah, let me, let me just, let me just drop that down so that it doesn't, it doesn't look like I am, uh, God is knocking on this door because the time will come, it will be clear to the world that the church is under serious judgment. Under serious judgment, gifts will be judged, prophecy will be judged, offices will be judged, and, and it will be clear that the heart of most children of God has not been delivered from greed, from ego, from all those things. That what is motivating them is self, is greed, not God. And you can, you can, you can see whatever proceed comes out of that thing cannot glorify God. God cannot want it. And that's why God can say to them, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I do not know you. Why? Because what led them to get to the to, to, the, to be set up by the devil will bring them down. And it will be seen that it will, not, it will not be anything God. That's why Jesus didn't fall for anything. Because in the beginning, he had been completely delivered of himself. Lord help me. 